Hi everybody, my name is Marta Dandolo and I am Herculaneum Society's Bursary. This is my podcast towards the first edition of PIERC 89-1301-1383, Philodemus, Opus Incertum. This is an Herculaneum papyrus roll broken in several pieces and stored with different inventory numbers. Probably during the eruption, the original roll was broken in the middle. Each of the two parts was decovered and opened separately from the other and is stored with a different inventory number. Recently, on the basis of paleographical, bibliological and textual data, I have discovered that also P. Erk 1301 belong to the same role. It preserves 24 scorze, namely fragments deriving from the opening of two pieces obtained by the so-called operation of scorzatura, carried out through a longitudinal cut applied to the lower part of the roll. The matching of these three papyri is paramount for knowledge of the Herculaneum collection and, more generally, of ancient Epicurean philosophical production. Actually, despite the poor state of conservation, the joined roll preserves a new theological work by Philodemus of Gadara, in the subscriptio put at the end of the work, unfortunately very damaged, I have read some letters of the author's name and very poor traces of the work's title. It is here possible to read also the term eupomnematicon, draft, which represents a bibliological information about the editorial stage of the not yet definitive version of the work. All the three papyri have so far remained unpublished due to their poor state of conservation. Here I would like to present some results obtained by the systematic study of the joined role in view of the first edition of the papyrus that I am preparing. In particular, I will briefly focus on how how much the old fragments in a digital reconstruction or maquette of the ancient role how I restored the right sequence of the columns thanks to the stratigraphical analysis of the fragments under the microscope. Some new acquisitions about the content of the work. Of the original roll, now 54 fragments overall survive. Dirty pezzi belong to the midollo, which is the internal portion of the roll. 24 pezzi belong to the external lower part of the roll. In order to put the pieces back together and match tops and bottoms, it is vital to determine their exact, exact order and their reciprocal distance in a digital reconstruction of the whole roll. An important guideline to consider for restoring the correct succession of the fragments is the narrowing of the volute, which are the circumferences of the unrolled scroll. Actually, the width of the volute decreases proceeding towards the innermost part of the volumen. The measurement of the volute showed that the order with which the fragments are preserved in their frames is incorrect and does not reflect the original layout of the scroll. On the basis of morphological data, together with bibliological and stratigraphical elements, I was able to restore the right sequence of the fragments in a pattern of this kind, and to reconstruct for the midollo a length of at least 10 meters. Let's see now the second part, the virtual reconstruction of the text. It's important to say that the reading of these papyri has been so far seriously discouraged by the very, com by the very complex stratigraphical situation. In particular, due to the carbonized state of the papyri, during the unrolling with the Piaggio's machine in 19th century, different layers of papyrus remained attached to each other. This makes it necessary to distinguish sovrapposti and sottoposti from the main layer, in order to virtually place them in their original position in the roll. The presence of many misplaced pieces can seriously compromise the reading and the understanding of the content since the mise page of the text appears totally disarranged. Restoring the correct order of the layers in a virtual reconstruction is the only way to read them. 
As a small example of the working method I used, I would like to show a virtual reconstruction case which I have realized through the combined use of multispectral images and the software for image editing and photo retouching. In the first step of the virtual reconstruction, I put in the maquette the image of the piece. In this phase, it is necessary to know precisely the width of the voluta, measured on the original papyrus with calipers. The width of the volute decreases moving forward to the innermost portion of the roll, usually with a decreasing of 1 or 2 mm between one voluta and another. This allowed me to reconstruct with the close approximation the width of the previous and the following volute, which at present are in lacuna. The stratigraphical analysis under the microscope allowed me to isolate sovrapposti and sottoposti and recognize their level with respect to the layer chosen as the main layer. In the digital maquette, the presence of layers currently out of order is displayed with different colors. Once the misplaced layers are identified, because the position in which they are currently located is wrong, they must be isolated and moved by many volute forward or backward based on the level they occupy. For example, a first level sovrapposto must be moved one voluta forward, a second level sottoposto two volute backward, and so on. The application of this methodology to all fragments of the roll allowed me to isolate the text sequences belonging to the same layer in order to achieve a genuine read reading of the text. To restore the succession of 156 writing columns in the virtual maquette. To restore the text of the columns through the association of textual sequences coming from previous and following volute. We can see a small example of a text string, aftertone, incorruptible, obtained after replacing a sovrapposto. In conclusion, a century ago, the German philologist William Kronert was able to read only nine words in Pierre KT9, and he supposed that this papyrus preserved a Philodemus work on gods. Thanks to the virtual reconstruction of several columns, although incomplete and seriously damaged, now we confirm the theological argument of the work and achieve a clearer knowledge of its content. In particular, we notice that at least three important religious topics were addressed by Philodemus in this treatise. A discussion of the qualities of the gods. A discussion of how we have knowledge of the gods. A polemic concerning the atheism, in particular against those who eliminate divinity. Thank you for your attention.